Your anxiety isn't all of you, it's a part of you. I realised that I could talk to myself, but I was doing it in the wrong way, in the way which was heightening my anxiety. I was consistent at it by the minute, rather less at home, but even when I was at home, I wasn't totally feeling safe. Welcome to the third episode of this series, tips to dig anxiety from the root when everything feels like it's going wrong. I'm Perception Shifter and in this video we're going to speak about how we can have a little chat with our anxiety. Now our mind always wants to keep us safe so it always shows us any future threats. Now for this reason when this heightens we sometimes find it hard to cope. Especially when we have faced a negative event or things aren't just going as they're planned. Now many of us do suffer from anxiety in once in a while and this is crucial for our survival. Because anxiety, it keeps us on our toes, it motivates us and it also protects us for anything that is yet to come. This ability of looking into the future gives us the opportunity to prepare and do what we need to do. Here are some tips that you can use in your anxiety that you can learn and implement throughout your life. Now this can help you with your anxiety straight away or even over time. Now tell me something, have you ever stopped and asked yourself why do we get anxious? We normally don't. And then we start to begin to go into overdrive where our thinking is just running. We all have stuff to do, we all have places to go to, we all have family commitments, work commitments and we don't stop. But when we don't stop, our brain goes into overdrive because now we've got our own pressure, of our own stress, of our own anxiety but then we've got our work pressure and then we've got our probably family pressure as well. Now when our mind goes into overdrive within our thinking we normally don't always assess ourselves and I don't think we all know how to either. Now this blocks our thinking and our performance. Now time to time your body and your mind needs that rest and if you're not giving that sufficient amount of sleep or the sufficient amount of food even. Now when we have all these pressures with our work and our, our family pressures and within ourselves with whatever's going on with our mind, our own stresses, we tend to then forget to recharge our battery. So in terms of our sleeping or even our eating. Now if you've ever watched Iron Man, in there he has someone called Jarvis and Jarvis, he always asks that how is my energy level? What is my energy level like? Allow me to introduce myself. I am Jarvis, a virtual artificial intelligence, and I'm here to assist you with a variety of tasks as best I can, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Importing all preferences from home interface. Systems are now fully operational. And Jarvis will reply, you're at 80% or you're at 50% of energy, or, you know, this has impacted you really badly. You know, you need to like, either take the suit off or change it or, get back to the, the station where where you get recharged or fixed up. So they're the same questions that you need to ask yourself that have I eaten correctly? Have I had good sleep? Am I feeling lonely? So these are the things that you need to ask yourself. You are your own Jarvis and when you ask yourself it's been so many hours I haven't eaten if I now eat or recharge my battery uh, with some sleep maybe then I'll be able to feel much much better and control my anxiety much much more or any stresses with work or family or yourself. So this is indeed affecting your thinking and it's also affecting your concentration. Now without food we all know that we can't concentrate correctly, we not able to remember anything or do anything or think clearly uh, and it's the same with the sleep as well it does impact our levels of concentration and our thinking. So this will just add or make it worse in terms of your anxiety. Now this takes us off the balance. Now this begins to affect our work and life balance overall. If you've noticed, your thinking, the stresses that you're going through has affected other things in your life as well. Maybe your social connections with people, maybe you not going out much, not doing things much, not probably attending the gym even. So it does obviously affect a lot of other things within your life. Now if one or a combination of these are present. So if you're hungry, this can also make you feel angry. And if you're angry, this can then make you feel tired. Now when you're low on energy and you're not talking to someone, that can also make you feel lonely. So one of these will affect the other over time. So once we conquer one of them, so if you're hungry and you go to eat, then this wouldn't then lead on to you then getting angry. Then you then maybe using up all your energy and feeling tired, feeling tired, you don't want to talk to anyone. So now you're also lonely. And like I said, 
this will have a major impact within your thinking and your anxiety. So here are some solutions that we can investigate together. How to use your intelligence. Now the minute you ask yourself, what is it that's making me feel anxious? At that moment now, your intelligence is in play. But for this you need to take a break. You need to give the brain or the mind a little bit of time to then come out with other suggestions and figure out what is actually going on. So what you're doing here is you're stopping the unnecessary thinking and you're directing your thinking into what you want to think about. Where you stop and you ask yourself the question, why am I feeling anxious? How to improve your thinking and your performance. Now your thinking is directly linked to your physical performance. So depending on how you think and how you are able to move things around within your mind, it'd be easier for you to then move things around physically as well. So for this, I would suggest any sort of problem solving games, maybe chess. Now a game of chess every day can tap into your intelligence because here you're going to be asking yourself these questions. If I move this, what if they move that? And if they move that, I might have to move this. So when you're playing this game of chess, you're using your brain power. And what you're doing here is you're building that mind muscle. Just how we build our physical plane within the gym. Here we're building our mind muscle and we're strengthening our mind and our thinking. How to come back into the balance of life. One health is more than enough to bring you back into the balance of life. Now this health could be your spiritual plane where you're either praying or you're helping others. You know, you're just doing things for not expecting anything back. You're not on that materialistic kind of greed kind of life and you're just accepting with what is and however it is within your life. So your spiritual health, it can bring you back into the balance of life. Then if we say we use our social, our social health can help us because what we're going to do is we're going to interact with more and many people and speak to them on what is going on within our mind. Yes, of course, ask yourself the question and bring your intelligence into it, but also have someone there and, and speak to them out loud or even write it down. When you do that, you'll be hearing yourself or seeing it if you're writing it down and you'll tend to start to see how silly you might be. So one of these helps, even your mental health is down, even your physical plane, that can also get you back to the balance of life by you either going to work or you using the gym or something like that. But then you don't want to be doing something when something is affecting you because you're not always going to go through this. You're not always going to be affected by maybe anxiety, not always. Now, when you don't and you're in a good state, yes, go to the gym or even accept things. Now, when you're in an episode, the best thing to do for you is to speak to someone. So whichever helps you have, you just need the one health to bring you back into the balance of life. It's very possible. But what we tend to do is because our mental health is down, we feel that we're not capable of doing anything else now and everything starts to get harder for us. So we start to get demotivated. Our thinking gets too much for us. Physically, we start to get demotivated. We get start to feel fatigue. We stop eating. We start getting lonely. We start getting tired. We get hungry. Because of our mental state, we don't look at, okay, hold up. If I start going to the gym, or do some more physical activity, use that health, I'd be maybe going to sleep earlier, I'd be having more sleep, so I'd be feeling better, or I'd be eating more, you know, so, you know, these things have a direct link to your anxiety, it's just normal, day-to-day, -day basic life stuff, but because of our mental health, that's been impacted, you know, generally, it's going to happen. You know, you're going to get demotivated. Things are going to affect you more than, than usual. You know, for normal people, that might not happen. But for us, people that have been affected with mental health, you know, these things that we need to really keep in mind is that to come back into the balance of life is just do normal life things. Like, if I tell the truth, I can't really understand a lot of people that have a normal life. You know, I think they're just searching for a bit more. But people like us who don't have a normal life and, you know, we've always strived to have that normal life. This is your opportunity. This is your opportunity to have that normal life, whatever you need to do. Cleaning, cooking, dishes, gym, family, whatever you need to do that you haven't got or you haven't had. And you've always wanted it. This is your opportunity. Get yourself in there to then sort out your mental health and your anxiety. Now, how to cross barriers that you might face. Now, a lot of this can add 
to our anxiety. Maybe the halt, maybe we're starting a new job, maybe there's too much work at the job, maybe you need to look after a family member. Now we become so involved in all this stuff and we tend to then start to forget our, about our own simple needs and we begin to neglect ourselves to obviously keep up the job or the work within the job or helping the family member. Um, so yeah, you come first always in, in terms of that. Once you've obviously sorted your stuff out um, within your self-care or whatever that you needed to do for your own well-being, then yes, do, do it in work or do it with the help of the family member. But then if you can't, you need to get help or you need to tell them that I can't do it. You know, even at work, um, you can tell them that, you know, it's something's been affecting my mental well-being and I might need some time out just to fix up myself. Maybe if you need any medication, of course, go to the doctors and, and seek that. But most of the time, it could just be that you're not generally looking after your own self. You're not putting that self-care within yourself. Um, so yeah, and if it's self-love, and you're destroying yourself more and more for the long run, then you need to look into what unhealthy behaviors are you doing that's not helping you love yourself. So that's another one, so you need to love yourself as well. So at this point, we need to take a few breaths and just chill, just relax. Forget about work, forget about who you need to help or what else you need to do. Relax, just think about what is affecting you maybe and see how you can improve that. See how what you can do in terms of self-care for yourself. How could you look after your own self? Because sometimes that is the issue. We're too busy doing other things and looking after other people and forgetting about ourselves. So if you're hungry, take that time out to eat. Be healthy. Now, if you're angry, I've got some more tips on an Instagram live that I did. And if you want to go to my Instagram page, um, it's called Perception Shifter. And on there, I did a live with um, Vertica. So if you then go on to the post and click on her page, you'd be able to go on to the Instagram live where I talk about men's anger, but it can help anybody that has anger issues. And obviously that is not good for the onset of anxiety either. Now, if you're lonely, I think the mistake that we make is we want someone else to always help us. So, you know, everyone's big nowadays as well. We all know sharing is very important. Sharing releases our emotions. But why would that person sit there and listen to you? In a counseling session, in a therapist, they get paid. So what are you doing for that other person, for then that person, for them to be there for you? So it's not always about, oh, I need to share, can you listen to me? It's about, oh, how's your life going? Let's empty your cup first. Tell me what are the baggages or anything on your day-to-day -day stresses. And then maybe be there for them. And then maybe you talk to them about your stresses. But don't always keep it as, oh, I need someone to talk to, I need someone to talk to. But then not be there for anybody else because that's pure selfishness and people will see that in you and they would always tend to see that oh you know this person is just kind of using me in that sense so always look at who can you help for then them can help you when you need it and lastly if you're tired then just relax and chill forget the world forget everyone forget everything relax enjoy do what you want to do Welcome to the new anxiety series. If you're suffering from this or you know somebody else that is, then please do share this video to them and do subscribe for more content on this series, tips to dig anxiety from the root when everything feels like it's going wrong. It's your boy Perception Shifter and I've been handling my addiction, my mental health and my criminal behavior. You're gonna have some more videos of mine flashing up on your screen right now. Um, you can click on them. I'm sure you'd enjoy them if you enjoyed this one. And if you've got any value out of this video, then please do smash that like button. Now give me a brief comment on what you think about this topic. I would like to know more. I'd like to understand more. Um, and if you have any tips for me, maybe I could use in my videos for next time, then please do put that in there. Maybe something that is helping you that I haven't mentioned yet. Now see you in my next episode. And remember, today's your best day because you are the best.